Uh-oh. Unemployment rose sharply in the UK in May, and compared to the previous month, the unemployment rate rose by 0.2 percentage points to 4%, as the ONS Statistics Office announced in London on Tuesday. Analysts, on the other hand, had expected a stable rate. Unemployment also rose in a three-month comparison, which fluctuated less clearly. The ONS attributed the development primarily to an increase in short-term unemployment. Despite the rising unemployment, the employment rate also increased. It rose by 0.2 points to 76%. The decisive factor is an increase in part-time employment, as the statisticians explained. The number of vacancies fell significantly and for the 12th time in a row. But it's still above the round threshold of 1 million jobs. And wages and salaries are still rising sharply, but minus even higher inflation they are falling. Normal, normal wages without bonus payments climbed by 7.3%. However, inflation eats up the increase so that real wages fall by 0.8%. And despite warnings from banks and parliament, wages in the UK rose 7.3% year on year from March to May. So they are falling, but they are still a warning. Because salary decisions are now pending in the public sector, the wage price spiral is threatening and the state must take action, many experts say. And Andrew Bailey doesn't let up on his warnings. Speaking in the City of London on Monday evening, the governor of the Bank of England called for moderation in wage, wage demands in the country. Both price and wage increases in the con current magnitudes are incompatible with the inflation target, he said. In recent months, he has often become much clearer and has expressly spoken of restraint. And the Chancellor of the Exchequer, Jeremy Hunt, also warns. We must make responsible decisions about public finances, including public sector pay, because higher borrowing is directly inflationary, he said at the same event. So far, the urging has been in vain. In the three months from March to the end of May, regular wages and salaries, excluding bonuses, rose by a record 7.3%, as I said, compared to the previous year, according to current data from the Office for National Statistics. That's the ONS I'm talking about a lot. In the private sector, employees even brought home 7.7% more. In the public sector, is what, uh, it was 5.8%. And Britain has been struggling with particularly stubborn inflation for months. The price increase is currently 8.7%. And the Bank of England's target, as in the Eurozone here, is 2%. And despite 13 interest rate increases in a row, most recently by 0.5 percentage points to 5% at the end of June, expectations of a significant drop in the inflation rate are being disappointed month after month. Inflation in the UK has run significantly hotter than policymakers had hoped. That was said by Matthew Ryan, a strategist at financial services firm Ebury. Bailey has repeatedly warned of the consequences of a second round of price increases. Today's news will do nothing to allay concerns about the degraded wage price spiral, he said. The level of wage growth is raising concerns among central bank and government officials of a wage price spiral, a steady spike in wages and prices. Higher wages drive up production costs and thus prices and in turn lead to higher wage demands. Although not the cause of the inflation, the wage price spiral ensures continued pressure to adjust upwards. Today's data confirms that the labor market is still heating up as wage growth remains uncomfortably high. That was said by Yel Selfin, chief economist at KPNG in the UK. The UK labor market is particularly tight compared to the US and EU countries, so the country may need higher interest rates to keep wage growth at levels the Bank of England is comfortable with. A decision on the development of salaries in the public sector is due by the end of the month. The independent bodies which are entrusted with recommendations for the individual administrative institutions, but also the education sector, the health service and more, recommend adjustments of 6% on average, according to media reports. In many areas of the public sector, strikes have been going on for months to get better pay. Despite recent significant increases, wage growth has lagged behind inflation. In real terms, employees are therefore worse off. 
And the Chancellor of the Exchequer Hunt has already emphasized that there are strict limits to possible wage increases. They cannot be financed through debt, he said in an interview with the Financial Times. The affected areas will therefore have to make savings elsewhere. Yeah, they have a record debt at the moment. Of course, he has to say that. The pressure on private wages and salaries will also remain high. In addition to the already rising cost of living, many British households are suffering from rapidly rising mortgage rates. According to the data provider Money Facts, banks and building societies now charge an average interest rate of 6.66% um, for mortgage contracts with a two-year term. 666? Oh boy. Interest rates are now higher than after last autumn's so-called mini-budget, when there were significant market swings after then-Prime Minister Liz Truss announced tax cuts without providing any funding. Unlike here in Germany, short-term financing has traditionally been the norm when buying property in Great Britain. The rising interest rates are quickly having an impact on household finances, which will result in further demands for higher wages, especially since a trend reversal in interest rates is not in sight. Investors would always up their bets that the next rate hike is imminent, and uh, financial markets are now pricing in a peak in UK interest rates of around 6.35% in the first quarter of 2024, which would certainly make the Bank of England the biggest hawk of major central banks for that period, they are sure. And uh, especially the thing with the uh, mortgage prices will be a problem. Um, I know from friends in the UK that their um, contracts are running out because of this, those short-term contracts there and uh, that they will definitely get higher interest rates on their mortgage rates. That is something that is fortunately different here in Germany. Um, we have co a compared low level of house owners here in Germany compared to other countries. But if people are um, buying their houses via mortgage, they are not at risk to get into those problems we see in the UK at the moment. So the inflation was no problem for the mortgages here in Germany. But uh, friends, friends of mine in the UK are, are quite concerned at the moment about this. Um, fortunately, they, the ones with the houses, are um, having jobs and uh, good jobs, and, uh, and they they will cope with it. But still. It, it's something that is not very nice and not really necessary. I talked about this yesterday as well. Brexit is exacerbating this inflation. The whole thing wouldn't be that bad without Brexit. And I know Brexiteers will still not admit it. And a lot of people who voted for Brexit will still not admit it. But it is the proven case. Nevertheless, um, we will definitely talk about this uh, much more often in the future. Also on next Sunday when there will be the next live stream. If you haven't uh, put that in your calendar yet, the next live stream announcement is already on my channel where you can already um, get and uh, click on it and then get an announcement when it starts on Sunday. Um, yeah, Cthulhu, I do not know Vancouver time, but thanks, Ellie, that you put it in because uh, I, I couldn't say all the t times for everyone around the world when, when it starts. It's 6 p.m. CET, so uh, it, it's Googleable um, to see what time it is uh, in your country. And uh, yeah, but uh, Ellie, thanks for, for giving the time to Cthulhu with the um, Vancouver time in the comments. I saw that. Um, and there's something else at the moment daily. There's always a new video every day on the newest channel outside views as TFC. That's why the banner is up there all the time. That channel is uh, something completely different than politics. Although when you are in an alliance in the game, um, you have to have di di diplomacy, which can be quite political. There's a Senate on my server where we are voting on stuff. And so, yeah. You, you cannot completely escape politics. But most of the, the of the time it's not about politics and so it's quite fun. And it's also kind of a rest for my brain from all the politics stuff. 
and the channel is doing fine for a brand new channel so um i want to want to um just remind everyone that the banner is up there and if you ever thought about supporting outside views you can help that um certain videos can be made um that but that need uh, investments beforehand and uh, that will not all be possible done just by myself um but if you haven't visited me there yet, um, just come over. Perhaps it, it might get you intrigued in the topic. You never know. And uh, there are a lot of people from different countries. In my alliance, for example, you always see when I'm doing the videos. Um, and a lot of people from the UK as well, by the way. But also from Finland, from um, Romania, from the, I think... the. Croatia was 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 there as well, Germany and and many other parts, and uh, it's it's a really nice stuff, and uh, just come over have a look, and see what I'm producing there, and I'll see you in my next video. I'll be back.